Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the bomber number LB4382-400-640 this is a 4x4 four four single acting spring hinge, full mortise, residential weight, lube bearing, steel based, satin nickel plated hinge. This hinge, it's a 4x4 four four spring hinge that happens to be particular for a, a very particular door manufacturer, meaning the templating. Let's, let's dissect the part number and we'll go through all of it. LB stands for lube bearing, that's maintenance free concealed bearing construction, a proprietary bomber sort of design that they use on their spring hinges. The 4382 means a lot of things, and let's go through them uh, one at a time. It means that it's 5 eighths radius. It means that it is 96,000 seven inch leaf thickness. It means that it is full mortise so that when the leaves are brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. It also means that the specific location of these holes is for a company called General Products. There is a link below this video to a document called Template that will allow you to review where those precise locations are and by all means review that to make sure that it's going to fit your installation because the leaves are not symmetrical. Okay, You want to be absolutely sure that it's going to line up. You don't want to order it to find out that it doesn't fit. The template is there and, and therefore all the dimensions are and you can simply compare that against the existing assuming that you're replacing a hinge. Uh, so it will mean that as well. After that you have a 400 in the part number. That means that the hinge is 4x4. Four four. That means that the hinge is 4 inch tall by 4 inch wide. Okay. Height is always the first dimension. When you say it's 4x4, four four, it's 4 tall and 4 wide. It doesn't matter, I suppose, since the hinge is square, but it would if the hinge was 4.5 four by 4. Okay, You'd need to know that the height was the first dimension. Finally, the 646, that means uh, three things, actually. That means that what you have is a steel-based hinge and a satin nickel finish, and this will have a lacquer that's over it as well. Yeah, definitely a lacquer coating is over this hinge as well. So 646 is satin nickel. Okay. Now, what you're dealing with also is uh, this hinge is available in all of the common finishes, your brasses, your bronze, your chrome finishes as well. Um, the LB4382 is available only as a 4x4 hinge. Okay, there are no other sizes available. And is a spring hinge, uh, finally is what it is. So we've looked at the template or we've called attention to the template. Let's go on through the rest of the extended description and quickly go over those items. It's full mortise, it's UL listed for fire door applications. Why is that important? Well it's important because if you have this installed on your attached garage door, that door is very likely fire rated and this hardware is compliant with that requirement as well. This is a grade one hinge, meaning that it's been tested to a million cycles. Grade one is the highest rating that there is when it comes to doors, uh, I should say door hardware. Rest assured it will meet the criteria of the most stringent test where it has the significant high test rating. Who knows what it will actually uh, you know, operate to, but it's been tested to a million cycles. Self-lubricating bearings, we talked about that earlier, being the LB construction, maintenance free. It's non-handed. You can install this on right-hand doors or on left-hand doors. You can install it this way or this way. It doesn't matter. Uh, special template hole location, we talked about that. This is designed to fit standard hinge preparation of general products. The, the operative term there is general products. That's like saying Chevrolet. It's a, it's a name of a company. Uh, pivot point aligns with residential butt hinges that are between 85 and 109 thousandths thick. Here's what that means. You can mix and match this with other hinges that have a leaf thickness between 85 hundredths and 109 thousandths uh, hinge uh, leaf thickness. Meaning if you have a door with three hinges, you don't have to have all spring hinges if your application doesn't call for it. You can install these in conjunction with another non-spring loaded hinge because the leaf thickness and the vertical axis of pivoting will be compliant when you are within that range of leaf thickness. Made of steel, 5 8 radius, 96 thousandths, eight holes, includes screws. You're gonna get machine and wood screws uh, with this. 
Now, we're getting into the size. Doors up to 307 only is what these are designed for. 85 pound doors, that means two spring hinges and a regular hinge. 110 pound doors, all spring hinges. Uh, there are links below this to the replacement tension pin and tension rod. This order happens to have two hinges on it, so there are two tension pins in the package. And that's your tension rod. There are links there that you can um, purchase those independently should you need them. And now let's move on to the installation instructions. Installation instructions are linked to from below this video. It's very simple and straightforward. When you install the hinge, just hang the door. Assuming that you're installing it with the tension collar pointed towards the top of the door, you see there's the tension collar here, okay, and it's not down here. You will open the door up a bit or leave it closed, whatever you like. You will insert into one of these holes your black tension rod. I'll get that worked into a hole. And then you turn it clockwise. If you've got it installed upside down, turn it counterclockwise. Clockwise. And as you turn it clockwise, you reveal new additional holes. It's into one of those new additional holes that you will insert that tension pin that you see. And that's how you set the tension on, on the hinge. If you are leaving some standard hinges, install the spring hinge in the middle location first, then the bottom, and then the top. Okay. If you have all spring hinges, doesn't matter obviously unless you have four, avoid the top hinge is what I'm trying to say. The top hinge will be the standard hinge and it really should be ball bearing um, uh, if you do not have all spring hinges. The top hinge, because spring hinges like this are technically not load bearing, they're not meant to carry the weight of the door, well it turns out that 70% of the weight of the door generally hangs on that top hinge. You don't want this hinge to do the bulk of the work of holding the door, but then attempting the bulk of the work to close the door. That's not what you want. Middle, bottom, then the top would be the key. Uh, do not exceed three holes of tension if you're going to open that out to 180 degrees. Okay, if you're going to make that door turn all the way back and be parallel to the wall. If you're going to 90 degrees, you can go up to four holes of tension. If you find that you're not getting the job done in that scenario, you, you probably need another spring hinge, or it could be that your door is not suitable for spring hinge installation. The rest of the uh, installation instructions uh, do not add anything that I've not just said, except um, you know, set the tension and then test it. Make one setting, test your door. Uh, and adjust as, as required. There is a, an additional link called Certifications and Hinge Selection Guide that's there, and the information that's on that page is informational. Uh, good to know stuff like how many hinge spring hinges are required for fire rated applications. Two is the answer. But then there's also a guideline in terms of how heavy is the door and how many spring hinges, assuming you're not getting beyond three foot by seven foot. And that's where the uh, size of the hinge and then the weight of the door come into play. Um, in our scenario, it's two hinges for 85 pound doors, three hinges for 110 pound doors, okay? Now here's my take on the quantity of spring hinges. You always want all spring hinges, is my opinion, uh, when you have a door that you need to be sure is always latching. And it's not because I'm a spring hinge salesman. It's because I've installed, I've maintained, I have reset, I have adjusted, I have trouble shooted, shot, uh, misbehaving spring hinges. My opinion is that spring hinges are not the right tool for the job. Spring hinges are what you use when all else is no longer, uh, or is not a possibility, such as a surface mounted door closer or an overhead concealed closer or a floor closer. Spring hinges like on the front of your home uh, really is the appropriate way to go and you may not be installing them because of fire rating uh, sorts of situations. You might be installing it because you just want the door to close behind you when you come through the opening and that's great. Spring hinges is will it make the door latch? So that spring hinge has got to get the door closed but also latched. Now if you're dealing with a fire rated door it's not optional. You don't have a fire rated door unless it is two things self-closing and self-latching. Both conditions must be met. 
The problem with a spring hinge is that uh, ambient air temperature, uh, air pressure will affect it. Uh, the seasons seem to certainly affect it as well, meaning you could have a three flat um, apartment building and the back windows are open during the summer and that door will just crash closed and will pretty much operate or behave that way the entire summer. So you can back the tension off. You don't want that door slamming shut and damaging the jam and hardware over time. In the winter it might be the opposite condition. Having additional spring hinges gives you more envelope to adjust, okay, to compensate, to get it to close and latch without slamming, to get it to close and latch and get closed and latched without limping and then failing to latch. Um, obviously if it's a very heavy door, I already said that spring hinges are not intended to carry the weight uh, of the door necessarily, but what you'll find is when you're, you're not going to find that to be a significant issue um, at all, uh, especially when the hinge is just 10 years old or something in that range. Um, additionally, if you're going to be opening the door out to past 100 or 90 degree, you're not going to be able to set the tension as high. You might need that additional spring hinge so that you have more stored energy, more stored torque. I liken spring hinges to um, tugboats. They don't go very fast, but they can pull a lot of weight. That spring hinge has got to overcome the fact that the door is at a dead stop, the weight of the door, all of the surface area of the air pressure that it's going to encounter, the friction of the latch bolt uh, as it hits the strike, misalignments in the jam, a warped door, and having more spring hinges really allows you a more pot higher potential for an agreeable solution. So keep that in mind. Hey, you can order one and add a second or a third if you find out later on that you certainly need it. The last thing I'd like to point out to you is uh, the Bomber logo on the hinge. Right above it it says Made in USA. That's a fact that Bomber is quite proud of as am I to represent them. If you have any questions on the Bomber, number LB4382-400-646, single acting spring hinge, or any other Bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.